Tesco. Tesco Online. We look at Tesco, um, it's a, a lecture in many ways, it's a session that's very complementary to the one about eBay because it's a kind of, it's a, it's a business that people, um, many of whom people can relate to it. Um, Tesco has got a very high profile, especially in the UK. Uh, most people will at some point shop in one of the many Tesco stores uh, that's actually a physical store or they'll use the Tesco online service. The Tesco online service we look at because it's a really good example of how an established retailer um, has made the most of its kind of internet assets and it has made the most of online sales to um, bring in kind of additional lines of revenue and capitalise on things, okay? So it recognises from the start, one of the things that Tesco is clever at doing is that potentially the kind of um, profile of internet sales might be different to in-store sales, okay? So the average spend is higher online than in-store. You know, you don't have all your grannies that you see lining up in Tesco or Metro in the Victoria Centre here in Nottingham um, necessarily making a lot of use of Tesco Online and when you go to Tesco Online of course you're tempted to buy all the extra higher value items okay so you bought your chips you bought your toilet roll you bought your dog biscuits why not treat yourself to some nice wine or they've got a whole DVD section why not get a computer game or something while you're at it you know they've really been able to expand and capitalize on the kind of the non-food lines with Tesco Online um, you can also buy your services itself, you know, if you want to access Tesco online through Tesco's own internet service provider, you can do that. Tesco telecoms, because you need your mobile phone, you can do that. Want to get yourself a VoIP phone? Tesco will provide it. Um, you know, insurance for all these lovely things that you bought? Tesco will provide it. Um, Tesco has been really, really good at trying to look at ways to exploit um, the online retailing situation that they found themselves in. Um, and they were certainly much quicker to do so than some of their other rivals such as Asda and Sainsbury's here in the UK. One of the other things that they did is they took a different approach initially and you'll see when we look at this we'll look at how they used kind of they made the most of their local assets um, so rather than building lots of big warehouses like Webfan did in the United States and Sainsbury's and Asda initially did here um, they tried to make the, most of, mo make the most of their existing infrastructure, their existing effort, assets so that when as a customer I place my order online my goods are delivered from, well, people often say the nearest store, which is not actually always the nearest store these days, but it will be a local-ish store, certainly rather than a central warehouse. And initially, this meant that um, they were able to get you know, very good returns compared to the investment that we're making. Um, they capitalised on the existing systems they had in place, etc., etc. So, you know, very successful for them. Um, and also they took a view right from the start that actually this should be a service that would have to pay for itself so in terms of delivery rather than offering free or very cheap delivery they said you know would this offer convenience to people what would people be prepared to pay for the convenience okay of not having to go to the shops of not having to trip around Tesco especially if it's busy and do all this stuff if you can get delivered um, so initially it was a kind of flat rate free of a fiver um, it's now a variable fee because again they keep looking at things and going well certain days certain times a lot of people want stuff delivering there are other days other times when there's less demand for people to have their home deliveries where we'll offer that at a discount so we keep maximizing the use of the staff and the vans and all the other assets and at the same time we you know we're, we're very careful about how we cover our costs and we offer variable sort of fees and things to people so it's all very carefully managed and right from the moment you place your order right round to the use of the computerised kind of shopping carts and the computers providing maps and other information within the stores and then the GIS systems that provide the routes for the vans and stuff you know an awful lot of technology is made to run and make sure that it's a very very efficient system um, and it's a widely studied because it's been very successful you can find loads of case studies you can find loads of, sort of papers analysing it so if you come to study Tesco and you're interested at all in the, how you know, a major retailer has, has made the uh, use of online uh, delivery, um, it's a fantastic one to get because you can find so many things on it. Okay? Uh, crucially, one of the things they've done as well, of course, is they've made use of things like their, their Tesco, the club card, um, and they get all this data from the club card and it can be combined with the data they get from people's online shopping experience if they also use that and they've really capitalised on that gathering of the data to offer um, you know, customised, apparently personalised incentives for all the shoppers uh, so they've really exploited that data um, and they generally deliver what we want you know, people at the moment, there's a bit of a backlash against Tesco oh, Tesco's everywhere well Tesco's very successful because it, by and large it's delivering what customers want and therefore people are shopping there um, 
however, it's interesting, you know, these, these things keep moving on all the time, it's very dynamic, so um, things that I may have talked about two or three years ago and played a lot of emphasis on, I'll now put less emphasis on, or things have changed. And again, it's not, you know, um, things don't necessarily just roll forward relentlessly. So things like the use of smart tags, radio frequency identification tags, um, Tesco's trialled those, um, not the only place to trial them, but they were all amongst the first people to trial them, um, and they've since kind of scaled back um, how they're going to roll those out. Um, just as an example of one thing that's, you know, they've simply not rolled out as a blanket experience. Uh, but again, most people can relate to it, it's fairly interesting, um, and it's a, you know, it's a nice, clear thing to get to get your head around if this is an area that you try to study, and there's loads and loads and loads, and I cannot emphasise yet again, loads of information to look at if you're ever going to write an essay on something like Tesco. Okay?